What does church mean to you? Is church a building? For some people, church is glory, is, 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 is holy buns. For other church people, it's just the opposite. It's blue jeans. For some people, church is a tent out in a, out in a pasture somewhere. Somebody else, church is a gothic cathedral, high steeples, haughty peoples. For some people, church is turning down the lights low, and you got to be 30 years old and younger. Amen. The guitar player has on a stocking cap, and the drummer's got on his uh, baseball cap turned back. Backwards, that's church. Other people, church is bright. For some people, church is what? Uh, church is, is, is singing. Church is choir. Church is the band. Church is prayers. Church is the communion elements. Church is uh, a building. Church is a place. But what is church? What do we mean when we say let's have church? Amen. Church today is something far beyond that. Church is a bridge between earth and heaven. Let me just get right to that. Lord, help us. Let's pray. Father, we ask you for a few minutes because, Lord, we have been having powerful words these past few weeks. And this morning, Lord, I ask you to just give us some simplicity now. So take me, Lord God, into Hebrews chapter 12 and begin to show us the simple truths of the Word of God in Jesus' name. What is church? Amen. Church is what? Church is physical. Everybody say physical. Why is that? Because we're a body. Amen? It's a place, a physical place with physical people. But it's more than that, it's mystical. It is physical because we're here in a place. Amen? In a tangible place. God has set us in this house today and in this place. But it's also mystical because what? There's a breath. There's an unseen current that flows through. Amen? That means we're different than a social club. We're different than the Kiwanis, or we're different than Longfellows or anything like that. Amen. Because we've got something that's spiritual, that's active in us. It's mystical. It's vertical. Everybody say vertical. Everything focuses upwards between us and God. The church is theological because it's all about us and the Lord, but it is sociological because it touches us and the world. And the cross that points upward also points outward. So the church is physical. We're here. It is mystical. There's a move of God. It is vertical because everything in our song, our praises, our word, our message, our thoughts, everything is pointed up to God. It is historical. Everybody say historical because we can go back and trace the roots of the church, but it is prophetical because we can see where the church is going. Amen. The church is alive. The church will win this thing. The gates of hell shall not prosper against it. The church is historical, prophetical, but it is practical. That means what? We are practicing our faith. Amen. Healing is taking place. Everything in the Word of God that is in practice today. And it's clinical. Everybody say clinical. Why is that? Because you can come up and you can be healed. This is a hospital of healing for those that will come. Amen. It is farcical to the world. They don't understand why you come here. They don't understand why you pay tithes. They don't understand why you lift up your hands. They don't understand speaking in other languages in the Spirit. They don't understand it. Amen. But it is political. Why is that? Not because we change votes, but because we transform society. We are salt and we are light. Amen. It is not clerical. Somebody says church is clergy. No, there's no sp place in God's church uh, for, 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 uh, for, for uh, a special parking place for the pastor and somebody to have to carry his Bible up to the front because he's some special thing. It's not clerical. It's not hierarchical. What's that mean? We don't have Amen. A hierarchy in the church where this one's better than that one. We're all one in Christ. It is evangelical. That means what? We preach the gospel of Jesus Christ. We believe in heaven and in hell. It can be liturgical. Nobody's getting anything out of these words today. Amen. That means what? When we just have the Lord's Supper, we don't just do whatever we feel like. There is some order that's involved, liturgical, it is musical. Amen. The greatest songs that have ever been written are songs that have been written from the church. You can go from David and the Psalms to Bach. You can move from Bach to Brownsville and Brownsville to Bethel. But the greatest music is worship music, and it flows from what? The church. Amen. Sometimes it's comical. Amen. That means what? I've seen people laughing in the Spirit, falling under the power of the Spirit. You just sit here and be in church and not only have it liturgical, but have it comical. Why is that? Because people are getting blessed and watching people is the funnest thing to do in church. No two are identical. 
What's that mean? You can go to the church down the street, the next one down the street. We're all a part of God's church, but none of us are identical. It is tactical. How you know, folks, we're an army and we're weaponized to stand against the enemy. And this church uh, that is physical, prophetical, clerical, not clerical, clinical, is what it is comical at times, but it is tactical. It can be critical. Get used to it, folks. When you come to God's house, there are going to be some things called out about you because the church holds a standard. If you belong to a church, amen, where you can do anything you want, live any way you want, amen, that is not the church because the church is not only critical, it is surgical. And that means what? When you preach the word of God, that scalpel cuts into the human heart. It pierces to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit. It exposes cancerous things and poisonous things on the inside and it cuts them out because the church is surgical and the church is biblical. Somebody say amen. Biblical is what? Amen. It's all outlined in the book of Acts. It didn't start in the ice house. It started in a hot house. Amen. On the day of Pentecost when a rushing mighty wind came and filled the place and being biblical, it became radical. Come on, saints. If you're going to belong to the church, uh, the church is a radical organization. Come on, folks. Uh, that means we, we praise Him radically. We worship Him radically. If you're not radical, you're not biblical. Radical means what? This is the radius. We're out on the fringe. But I want to tell you something, folks. Uh, there's a lot of glory out on the fringe. Don't just be mainstream. Be extreme with your Christianity. It's biblical. It is radical. Amen. It is tactical. And it is a miracle. Everybody say miracle. Why is that? Because the church is not just an organization or an order. It has the breath of the living God in it. Hallelujah. The word ecclesia means called out. The word church comes from kiri in Greek, which is Lord and oikon, kirioikon, kirk, in other words, in German, the kirk, and end up with the word what? Church. How many of you don't like the word church? Church. We're going to have church. Let's go to church. That's so churchy. I like church about as well as lurch. I like church about as well as porch. Porch. Say that out loud. Porch. The porch. That's not a very cool word, is it? Church is not a very cool word, but it's cool with God. And I want to show you why today. Jump over there to Hebrews chapter 12, uh, Tricia, and uh, move along here. And let's look at some things here this morning. Next verse. You are come to the Mount Zion. You're come. Everybody say, why did I come? Why did I come? He said, you are come to where? Mount Zion. Next, next slide. Mount Zion. Amen. We are called. The church is called. You are come. Every Sunday we come together. Other times we come together. Why is this? Because we're coming out so that we can come in. We're coming out from the world. We're coming out from sin. Church has nothing to do with the band on the, on the platform. It has nothing to do with the building you're in. It has nothing to do with clothing. It has nothing to do with hairstyle. It has nothing to do with uh, the songs that are selected. It has nothing to do, amen, with just a doctrine. It has to do with what? A people who have been called out so that they can be called in. You are come to Mount Zion. Mount Zion is what? It is the throne room of God on earth in that day. That means what? Jerusalem. New Jerusalem coming down from heaven. This is the Father's living room. Amen. Mount Zion is what? That's where David came and he drove out the Jebusites. Church is what? Church is a place where we have driven out every attack of the enemy. We have driven out the Jebusites and we have created what? A throne room. It was on Mount Zion that they perched the tabernacle and that's where the glory came down. So what I'm going to start working towards here today, folks, which is starting out real slow, is what? Church has nothing to do with singing a few songs, shaking a few hands and going home. It has to do with bridging the gap between earth and heaven to where heaven and earth start to commingle. There is no other place in this town where heaven and earth become one. Enoch walked with God and what happened? He went right into heaven. Church needs to be so close to God, amen, that you find yourself 
in heaven, heaven on earth. Amen. It's the place where everything that happens in heaven happens down here. In a church service, people ought to be healed. In a church service, people are caught away with joy. In a church service, all fears and anxieties vanish. In a church service, there is perfect peace. Why? Because we've come to the throne. We are at Mount Zion, number two. The church is not only called, the church is alive. Everybody say this is a living place. Amen. The city of the living God. We call this a city on a hill. Amen. And why is that? A city is what? A city is all kinds of streets and, and uh, parks and libraries and municipal uh, buildings and houses and homes and flats and condos and blocks all coming together to become one. Amen. And we what? We're all kinds of different people, all kinds of different backgrounds, different classes, different races. Amen. Different social standings. But we become what? One in Christ. And all of us have had the breath of the Holy Spirit. And that makes us what? The city of the living God. We're not serving a God of history. We're not serving a God that I got out of the encyclopedia. We're not serving a God that I found on a flannel graph in a children's church. We are serving what? The living God. And what church does is it brings us, amen, not only to the throne room, but into the very life of his presence. Number three, amen. He said what? The church is celestial. That is what? It's heavenly. The heavenly Jerusalem. And when you get here in this presence, it's like we could just, how many of you feel like sometimes I could just step right into him? I could just step right into heaven. Huh? And if that atmosphere is not in our services, folks, I don't know how we can call ourselves what? Church. Huh? Church isn't your place on your seat. Church isn't a pew. Huh? Church isn't uh, a, a billboard. Church is what? It's a place where I can get away from it and I can step right into heaven itself. You know, when James and John went up with Jesus on the mount and he was transfigured. That is a picture of what every church service ought to be. Amen. Because heaven came down to the mountain. And every Sunday I'm praying heaven will come down to the mountain. This is the heavenly Jerusalem come down out of heaven. Everything God has is coming down on us. And he's meeting at us in a meeting place called what? Church. Everybody say church. Number four. Church is what? Supernatural. Amen. If it's not supernatural, I don't want any of it. Amen. I can go to the doctor to get pills. I can go to the psychologist to get counsel. I can go to mom and dad to get somebody to give me a hug. But church is what? A supernatural place. He said to an innumerable company of angels. There are angels all around us right now. That doesn't happen in any other earthly institution. Amen. Sister Deborah saw three of them perched up on the top of the building the other day in a vision. Amen. I've seen the presence because this is a supernatural thing, huh? Healings take place. Broken arms are reset. Come on, folks. Knees are given new strength. The feeble are made strong. The weak are given power. Amen. The depressed are set free. The, the addicted, amen, are loosed and delivered. The sinful are given a new capacity to stand righteous. Why? Because everything in the church is what? Supernatural. Everybody say super. Say it's supernatural. I wish I could preach good today. Help me, Lord. Number five, it's what? It's, the church is one. He said to the general assembly, each of you can have church at home, but it's when you gather in the meeting house. Amen? That's right. uh, Kiri, uh, what? Lord, Oikon, house, the Lord's house, is what the word church means. Huh? And so we come together because what? We're one. Doesn't matter if we're children, doesn't matter if we're teenagers, doesn't matter if we're redheaded or blackheaded. It doesn't matter if we're older or if we're younger, amen, we have come to worship him. We have come to bow down and we expect something supernatural, but most of all, we expect unity and oneness. Help us, Lord, the general assembly. Everybody say general assembly. That's what? That's when we all gather together. Everybody lets their hair down. Everybody contributes. Everybody, amen, adds their gift. Whether the gift is music, whether they're a miracle worker or a mechanical worker, it doesn't matter. You bring your five talents, your two talents, your one talent. You release yourself to the work of God. Amen. We're one. Number six, the church is what? The church is family. This is the church of what? The firstborn. So if this is the church of the firstborn, it means that Jesus is the first one that started the church. He's God's firstborn. But notice it did not say 
the church of firstborns. It is the firstborn. And that means every one of us are firstborn. That when Jesus died, we died. When Jesus rose, we rose. When Jesus was seated, we're seated. And because he's Lord of the church, we too take the same co-heir role that he has. We walk in power. Amen? Amen. This, is, this is the church of the firstborn. Kings are always firstborns. If every one of us are kings, then that means every one of us are a part of the firstborn. How many are part of the church of the firstborn? Now notice as I'm going through this, we're not getting any dis- definition of the church being what we thought it was. That the church is a meeting in our living room, or that the church is a place where we sit on chairs, or the church is a semicircle, or the church is a shotgun building, or the church is a bunch of people in a choir loft. All we're seeing is what? God is calling us up to a place near the throne room where the family sits at the Father's feet. Amen. And all of us are one. And everything that happens is what? Supernatural. Number seven, the church is what? The church is separate. That is, the church is selective. Not everybody's a part of the church. You say, I go to that church. That doesn't mean you're a part of that church. Because the church, first of all, had to be what? Had to be washed in the blood. The lamb had to die. To be a part of the church, you've got to be born again. Turn to your neighbor and say, you must be born again. What's that mean? You didn't just sign on the dotted line and become a member. To be a part of it, this is a select group. Their names are what? Written in heaven. You know, God has a, a, a membership role. The new version say enrolled in heaven or registered in heaven. Amen. And we're all registered in the registry of heaven, the Lamb's book of life. Praise the Lord. And we're registered today. How many of you had your name written down? How'd you get it written down? You just said yes to the Lord, and he got his big old pen out, amen, opened up the pages and inscribed and etched your name in the Lamb's book of life, written in heaven, amen? And uh, that means we're separate. You can't be what you used to be. I can't be what I used to be. When this thing, when deliverance came, when salvation came, He said, I've not called you to Mount Sinai. I'm not bringing you to the mountain that smoked where the law was written, but I'm bringing you to a new covenant that's written in the hearts. Amen? And when you come into my presence, you're stepping right past the veil into my very courts of glory. I wish I could see this, Lord. I wish I could get them to understand what would happen if we would just step out of this mortal into that immortal. If we just realize that when we're in your house, heaven has come down and kissed earth. If we could just realize that the angels are there up in the corner and some are standing back there, amen, with swords drawn. And God's wanting to release everything that he has. And the ark of the covenant, the throne, has been set up right in our midst. So why are we not falling at his presence? Why are we not laying in the presence of the Lord? You said that would mess up our Uh, That would mess up our three-point sermon, or that would mess up our uh, order of our church, or that would mess up the bulletin. No, no, no. Let God do whatever He wants, whatever it takes, Lord. If we want to come in some Sunday and we're not going to, and we're not going to sing at all, we're just going to come in and lay flat in His presence for an hour. You say, I don't want to go to that church. Well, that's the church, Amen. That's in the in the throne room, huh? You say, I don't want to come to a church and we're just going to do like we did this morning. We could have started laying hands on everybody and I wouldn't have had to preach this attempted message. Huh? Because God would have been touching people and people would have been healed and the glory of God would have come down like it did last week. I'm trying to just get us to see that we're one step from moving from churchiness into church. Amen. Because church is what? It's a people whose names are written in heaven. Number eight, church is under judgment. He said, the judgment begins where? In the house of God. And we first come to the Lord just as we did this morning and examine ourselves, whether we're in the faith, and looked in our hearts to make sure that everything's right between us and God. Because we serve what? Not only the living God, and not only is this the Father's living room, and not only is this the place where the ark is perched, but this becomes what? The place where the judge of all the earth begins to look in our hearts and look in our eyes and look in our attitudes and our behaviors and judge things. How many of you say, go ahead and judge it, Lord? Go ahead and deal with it, God.
Go ahead and show me where I'm wrong. Go ahead and show me where I need help. See, a lot of people do what? Vamoose out of, quote, the church. Why is that? Because there's always another church uh, that will open the doors and welcome you in. But that's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about a separate people, a holy people, a people that want everything in their lives to be exactly the way the Lord would have it be. Why? Because we're going to heaven. We're headed to heaven. We're in the world, but we're not of the world. Amen. The tabernacle set up out in the middle of the desert, but it's moving because it's going to the promised land. And you and I, folks, that have come out of the Egypt of sin and have come out of the slavery of our old addictions are headed somewhere. Amen. A holy people, a peculiar people, a bride without spot or blemish. Help me, Jesus. Number nine, the church is what? The church is spiritual. He said, and to the spirits of just men made perfect. Hallelujah. That is what? Everybody here is a spirit person. You know, some places we go and we're just treated as what? Bodies. We're treated as numbers. We're treated as as uh, just part of the social club. But we understand that we are living spirits. Amen. And we are a spiritual people that that are a spiritual house and that know God in spirit and worship in spirit. We pray in the spirit. We sing in the spirit. Sometimes, folks, we prophesy into the spirit. Sometimes we just flow in the spirit. Everybody say, I want a church that is spiritual. That's what I want, folks. And we're moving to a place where of the spirits of just men and God's perfecting us. Amen? We're not perfect yet. The church isn't perfect. But some people advertise, come to our church. If you're imperfect, come to our church. It's an imperfect church. Well, good for them. That's not the goal for God's people. The goal is to be perfect even as your Father in heaven is perfect. And so we're moving on to what? Forgetting those things that are behind, but we're moving on unto perfection. We don't come just to think. We don't come just to bring our physical bodies and sit on a seat. We come as spirit men, amen, that want a spiritual experience with a spiritual God. And he has blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ, amen. I don't know if anybody gets anything I'm saying tonight. Number 10, and and the church is covenantal, covenantal. We're in covenant, amen. No other institution do you have this kind of a covenant where we're not just family, but we're what? We're blood brothers. We're in covenant. The head of the church slit his wrist to become a blood brother with us. His hands were nailed to the cross. He shed blood, and this morning as we take of the cup and of the bread, we renew our contract with heaven. We belong to you, Lord. This world is not our home. Thank God for every temporal blessing. Thank God I've got a house, a home. Thank God a good wife. Thank God my kids, uh, amen, got jobs and everything seems to be going good, good on this earthly plane. But that's not what church is. Church is moving us and transitioning us into the heavenly realm. Hallelujah. And we're in covenant with God. We don't hear enough about heaven anymore. We don't hear enough about hell anymore. Amen. This church... Uh, of the living God is doing what? We are not of the world. We're in it, but we're moving through it. We're on our way somewhere. And we're in covenant with God. Hallelujah. He's going to keep us till the end. And he's going to see us through every bad time. He's going to take us through every tough time until at last we stand what? Perfected in Christ. And the author of our faith becomes the finisher of our faith. And we're what? At last where? Home. Where? Church forever. Everybody say church forever. Some people want to squeeze church into 10 o'clock sharp to 12 o'clock dull. Everybody say dull. That's kind of the way it's going today. It started good. 10 o'clock sharp to 12 o'clock dull. Amen. And then what? We're going to come seven days from now. When I got first into this thing, everything was what? Church. Church. I ate church. I breathed church. I lived church. Nobody knocked on my door and begged for me to come to church. Church wasn't a question. We didn't vote as a family. Are we going to church today? No, because what church was what we were. We were the church, a part of the church. Because we were the church, we couldn't wait, folks, to get out of the earthly and get into the heavenly and to come into his courts, amen, with a tambourine. Or I had one time we didn't have an acoustic guitar at our church. Amen. Uh, I didn't have a guitar. I was playing banjo, leading songs. 
three months after I got saved because there wasn't any instruments in the church. What do you think that sounded like with banjo playing? And everybody else clapping their hands, a couple of old ladies that can't keep time, banging on a tambourine. But we did what? We had church. And we didn't just do it on Sunday morning. We came back Sunday night, hallelujah. And then when the revival came one week and two weeks, uh, and it didn't matter, folks, if it was midnight, we were laying in the presence of God because we wanted to move out of this earthly into the heavenly. And you can't live in the heavenly if you just spend a little bit of time in his presence. We're in covenant with you, Lord. Huh? And number 11, the church is what? The church is blood washed. I said the church is blood washed. And he said, the, those who are written in heaven to the God, the judge of all, and to the spirits of just men meant perfect, to Jesus, the mediator of the new covenant, to the blood of sprinkling that speaks better things than that of Abel. And we have all come under the fountain. There is a fountain filled with blood drawn from Emmanuel's veins. And the thing that makes us a church, folks, is not our, our uh, music selections. It's not our hymn book. It's not our pastor. Somebody says, I love that pastor. That's good, but what about loving that Lord Jesus? Huh? Yes, right. Their church. Their church. Why don't you say my church? That church. How about you say this church? I hear it all the time. People, I'm, I'm not going to that church. Huh? I'm going to, come on, I'm going to this church. You are come to Mount Zion. I said, you are come to Mount Zion. She made an effort today, amen, to get up. Why? Because she misses what? Church. Everybody say church. Huh? How, 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 how can people skip church? How can people deny church? Amen. What, what is there better than church? And have, Well, you say church is boring. Yeah, but that's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about getting so near to heaven, amen, that Peter and James and John are with Jesus, and Jesus is transfigured. And Peter says, man, we want to stay here. We'll build three tabernacles for you because we don't want to go back down there once we've got up here. Listen, when you've been in revival, nothing else will satisfy you. When you've been in the courts of the Lord and been in the presence of God, Amen. nothing else can take the place of what? Church. Amen. Stuff can take the place of religion. Stuff can take the place of tradition. It's not an accident this morning that we talked about laying aside our tradition and laying aside our religion because what I'm offering you today, folks, is not a high steeple and a haughty people. What I'm offering you today is not just a ladies' auxiliary and not just a men's group and not just let's go bow at the altar. I'm talking about stepping in to heaven. God, give us heaven on our way to heaven. Say that. Give us heaven on our way to heaven. Amen. The day of Pentecost was heavenly. Come on, saints. The wind came. The fire came. People are staggering like drunken men. They're manifestations of the Holy Spirit. The whole town, amen, turned their attention away from the Jewish rut and ritual of Pentecost feast and came running to the upper room because they heard something was happening up there. God, church is where it's happening. Church is where people want to run to. Church is where people... Since God, this is not only biblical and radical and theological, it's about Him, vertical. Right. God, take us up Amen. to your heavenly places. And it's blood washed. How many of you have been washed in the blood? And finally, number 12, according to the next verse, he said, see that you refuse not Him that spoke from heaven because the church is accountable. And uh, we all give account of ourselves to God. And this isn't just a bless me club and a place to get goosebumps and doodads running up and down my spine. I like that. Hallelujah. Amen. And I want to run the aisles. And I want to shout and rejoice. And I want to feel his presence. And I want it to start here and work its way down. And I, I love to feel the joy of the Lord and the peace of God. But after all that is done, we still are accountable to God. Amen. And we're accountable for our services. We're accountable for our daily life. We're accountable for our businesses. We're accountable for our, our marriage, our ministry, our money, our motives, our moods. Amen. Our minutes, our mouths. Amen. He said, see that you don't refuse him that spoke from heaven because God speak. And I want you to skip over two slides. Let me close. A couple more slides, Trish. Uh, 
So no, so notice this. So where are we headed in this thing? Where are we headed? Here's Jesus standing amongst his seven golden candlesticks. It's not about a building. It's about an atmosphere. It's about a people. It's about a hunger. It's about a longing. It's about a desire. God, this is what church is to me. I want to move into your presence. If it takes all day, I don't want to leave it. I don't just want a word so I can go home. Thank God for a good word. I don't want just a touch. Thank God for a touch. But I want this to be a life, Lord. Like I said, we lived and breathed and ate church. Church was all we knew. Huh? Even if it was playing a banjo. Within two years of getting saved, I was pastoring my first church. I, was, I, I came to the Lord in a church at age 20 years old after the Jesus Revolution where uh, we had three pastors in my first year and a half of being a Christian. That's not very stable, is it? But my stability wasn't built on a pastor and it wasn't built on the building or the denomination. It was built on what? The covenant that I had with God. And I told them, I'll, I'll pastor the church if you let me pastor it. Well, Chris, you've only been a Christian for a year and a half. I said, that's all right. Nobody else is pastoring it. I'll pastor it. They said, well, go ahead and you can come preach Sunday night. And once I got the invitation to preach Sunday night, amen, my hair was down to here. And then I had progressive sanctification because I cut it to here and there. And when I got it to here, they went ahead and let me teach a Wednesday night service. Amen. Then when I got it up to here, then Sunday night, I got to come up and preach. And when I preached, I felt so good. And I thought, what is they do after church? Well, the preacher goes out and eats pizza after church. So I took my wife. We went to eat pizza. And as we were sitting down there eating pizza, a young man came into the building and he was blue in his face and he was staggering around and he was putting some quarters into him, into the phone and dropping the quarters. And he started to walk out and I, I looked over at him and my wife said, if you don't help that man tonight, something terrible is going to happen to him. I said, I feel the same thing. I walked out and there in the side, in the middle of the street, he was standing. His cars were going both directions. Amen. And I said, sir, come over here. Would you like a ride home? He said, why would you give me a ride home? I said, because I'm the preacher of the church. Now listen, folks, I've only been saved for a year and a half, and I'm not officially the preacher. They just didn't have anybody to fill in, so I said, I'll do it. Amen. And, and, and what? Because I'm doing it. I'm doing what preachers do. I went out for pizza, and now what do preachers do? Preachers help people. So I said, get in the car. He said, all right. And he sat down in the car. We drove a block. I didn't know what to say to him because I've only been a preacher for about four hours, about two and a half hours now. Amen. And I don't know what preachers do except they go to Pizza Hut and then if they help somebody and I was driving home helping somebody and what do I say? And, I, and he said it for me. He said, there's got to be more to life than this. I said, well, that's an open door. Let me explain it to you. I turned left and one block away was the White Church of God building. And I said, do you see that building? I said, I'm the pastor of that church. I'm not really the pastor. I haven't been elected. They just didn't have anybody to fill in. Amen. And I've been a preacher now for what? Two and a half hours. Let's add another 10 minutes. We've been talking. I pulled up next to that church. And he's staring at it. I said, you see that church? I said, we believe at that church. I'm talking about church today. We believe at that church that God can heal people, set people free and deliver them. And he started shaking and he started crying. He said, I know that. I said, how do you know that? He said, my mom and dad used to be the pastor of that church. I said, how is it that you're in my car sitting right next to that church? He, God set this up for you tonight, sir. I started to pray for him, and as I did, a spirit overcame him, and he started screaming. His face became like contorted and in fire, and he said, I'll fight it. I'll fight God. I'll fight God. What am I supposed to do now? I've only been a pastor for two hours and 22 minutes. I drove to the address he gave me. He's sitting there crazy acting. I reached over and laid hands on him and said, in the name of Jesus, set him free. And all of a sudden, he slumped back in the seat and his screaming turned to hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. I got out of the car, opened up the door of my little 1971 Pinto, and he bowed down under the light of the apartment building and said a sinner's prayer, and we gave a big hug, and he went to his house delivered. That's what church is. Come on, saints. Supernatural. I don't know why I got on that, but he's about to present this thing, what? A glorious church, a church of glory, not a church of pews, not even a church of niceties. How many of you like the backdrop that David and I put up the other day? Doesn't that look good? 
And we're going to do everything we can to make sure that the lighting and that the sound and that the personnel on the platform and that the ministries, everything that is what church is right. But there's only one thing that's totally right. And that is we're bridging between here and heaven. And it's going to be what a glorious church or a church of glory, not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing, but that it should be holy and without blemish. He's preparing a bride. Next slide and I'll close here. He said, when the Lord shall build up Zion, he shall appear in glory. Zion is what? That's where we started. You've come to Mount Zion to a company of innumerable angels. Huh? To the very seat and throne room of God. I've raised you up, hallelujah, into heavenly places. You're up on the mountaintop. My glory is transfiguring. You want to stay here. You want to stay here. If you're sitting here this morning looking at your watch and say, I've got a chief's game to go to, or I've got dinner on the stove, and I've got, and then what? Then you're a part of what? Church. But you haven't stepped into church. Do you all know the difference between Mount Sinai and Mount Sion. Do you know the difference between just a Sunday exercise and a religious gesture versus going after and hunger, a life-changing, radical experience in this mystical, tactical, theological, biblical, radical, clinical study that we're having today called church. The glory of this ladder. It's all about glory, folks. The glory of this ladder house shall be greater than the former. The glory that was on Sinai was so powerful that if you touched the mountain, you must be struck through with a dart. There was lightnings coming off the hill. There were voices and trumpets that even Moses said, I exceedingly fear and quake. And yet this last glory goes beyond anything that Moses had. When Moses came off the mountain and his face, amen, shone like an angel. Yet with this transfiguration, it flows through Jesus' clothing. It flows out of him. There is a glory that is coming in this last hour that will attract millions to the cross of Calvary through the agency of what? Church. Church. Somebody said, I can get everything I need on the street. I like your services, but services for me is down in the ghetto handing out dinner boxes. Thank God for dinner boxes, but it will never replace church. He said in Isaiah 60 and verse 13, beautify the place of my sanctuary and I will make the place of my feet glorious. And notice the glory that's coming on this last house, the glory that's moving In this last day, now there's his throne. There's the ark and his feet stretched out and his son sitting at his right hand till I make your enemies your footstool. And we have the pleasure and the joy and the invitation. You are now come, not to the mountain that burned with blackness, but you are come to the city of the living God and prostrated at his feet. I will make the place of my feet glorious. In other words, I will pour out glory wherever people are bowed to wash my feet and kiss my feet and worship at my feet. And that's where I'm at today. And this didn't go the way I wanted it to, but that's all right, folks, because the Holy Ghost has just had been speaking to me in the middle of the night on verses that I'd never, ever dealt with in 45 years of preaching because I thought it was just a little pretty little saying that you had there in Hebrews 12, you are come unto Mount Sion, unto the city of the living God, to an innumerable company of angels, to the church of the firstborn and the general assembly. Amen. And all of that beautiful stuff, flowery words from the pen of the writer of Hebrews. But it's more than flowery words. It's an invitation to bridge between here and there to where there becomes more real than here. And you say, well, then, Chris, you'd be so heavenly minded that you'd be no earthly good. There has never yet in Christianity ever been somebody so heavenly minded that they were no earthly good because Enoch was heavenly minded and he just took a step out of this world into that world. And one of these days he's coming back for a people that are so in love with heaven Amen, that when the trumpet blasts, it won't be a matter of get ready. Amen, get ready to jump. We're going to get caught up. So 
jump because jumping ain't going to help you. But if you love there more than here, then what would happen? I'm going home with you, Lord. Don't get so caught up with down here. That's why people don't come to church because down here is more important than up there.